Pro Football Weekly is grading every team in the league on their post-lockout moves. Right now we're talking about the NFC South. And the class of that division last year was the Atlanta Falcons. You gave them an A- minus for their post-lockout moves. Probably going to stay that way. Starting with the offensive line. They kept two of the three starters that went into unrestricted free agency, Tyson Claybone and Justin Blaylock. Very good group still there. And now you look at Ray Edwards, the guy they picked up. Eight, only $11 million guaranteed for him. Pretty good price for the second best defensive end on the open market. So uh, that really fills a need for them. Helps that pass rush. Yeah, especially considering how much money Charles, Charles Johnson got from the Panthers. A great pickup in Ray Edwards. Speaking of those Panthers, one of the most active teams in all of the league. Yet I don't know that they really improved that much. You gave him a C plus. Yeah, you're not going to call Jerry Richardson cheap anytime soon after these past few weeks. But was it the most efficient use of Jerry Richardson's yeah. money? That's my question, and that explains the grade. You look at how much they pay guaranteed money to D'Angelo Williams, 21 million, a little high for me, 32 million for Charles Johnson, a guy they had to have. I have less of a problem with that that figure, but still high. And then seven million dollars signing bonus for Thomas Davis, a guy coming off two torn ACLs, hasn't played in quite some time question that move. And a lot of money spent on a kicker, Alain Amari, too. Just kind of strange moves from them. The Saints, they got our highest grade in A. You really liked what they did this offseason. Not a lot of flashy moves, but overall, the whole group, they look at what they did, I like it. You know, it starts with the dealing Reggie Bush. The fact they were able to get anything for him, pretty <laughs> impressive. They pulled that off with the Dolphins. I like that they were able to keep Jermon Bushrod at left tackle, re-sign Lance Moore, <laughs> a key part of that passing game. And then they go out and add a brave Franklin to the interior of that defensive line. You pair him with Cedric Ellis, Sean Rogers is there too. Real nice group up front for them now. Just seems like they filled holes where they need to. Darren Sproles coming in to replace Bush as well. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a surprise 10 win team last year. You gave them a C-. Yeah, they didn't do much. Michael Kanan, really a punter, really the only key arrival for them. Uh, you know, helps some special teams, but I think there's more they could have done. Uh, I think maybe Mark Donovan, general manager, was a little overconfident with what he already had. And, I think there were some moves to be made that they left out there, and they, as you mentioned, certainly had the money to be aggressive. Yeah, when your biggest move is bringing in a punter, that's not exactly something for fans to get excited about. That is a look at the NFC South and the offseason moves they made. For full coverage of the NFL, check us out at ProFootballWeekly.com.